cable. One cable to run. Stand by, out, pitch. Half a cable to run. Half a cable, stand by. Midships, here, three, five, two, stand by. Now, now, now. The mine is a powerful weapon in times of war. In fact, in all the modern history of naval warfare, mines have been responsible for damaging and sinking more enemy ships than any other method. Here is the layout of a modern mining deck. There are the rails which run the full length of the deck to the stern doors. Just forward of these doors are the traps from which the mines are released. In elevation, you can see how the rails are contoured to a high point two mine spaces before the trap and then fall sharply downwards to the trap itself. During mine laying, a further hinged section is extended beyond the stern to carry the mines clear of the ship. The embarkation hatch and the actual loading points are just a stern of the forward end of the mining rails. The forward of the loading point is the bogey. It is drawn astern by the winch during the actual laying. The trap, essentially a simple device, consisting of two dogs operated by a lever. As the one nearest the doors is retracted, to allow the release of the mine, the forward one emerges. The second mine is prevented from entering the trap until the previous one is cleared of the ship. The next then goes into the trap and is held there until the order to lay is given. A safety pin is fitted and it must only be removed during the actual laying of each mine. Now to the embarkation point at the forward end of the mining deck immediately below the loading hatch. At the loading point are two hinged flaps which are opened to allow the wheels to enter the rails. Two guide plates are fitted to ensure accurate railing. Immediately forward of the loading point is the bogey which pushes the train of mines towards the stern doors. It is drawn by the winch situated at the stern of the ship. The hauling aft wire is led through rollers on the inboard side and rigged round the bogey and the covering flaps closed. The hauling aft wire is continued astern on the outboard side, guided by clips. The end is anchored to a spring buffer close to the trap, which is designed to absorb any jerks when the winch is operated. During laying, the bogey is hauled astern moving the train of mines towards the doors. While today mining is generally carried out by voice signals from the bridge, there are secondary methods in case of a communications failure. One of these is the mechanical indicator. This is operated from the bridge and repeats on the mining deck, much as an engine room telegraph. Operated alongside this mechanical indicator is an electrical one consisting of visual signals augmented by gongs. Two gongs are sounded for port, and one for starboard. There is also the jamming indicator. If the mines get fouled, the bogeyman will turn the switch which tells the winchman to stop hauling immediately. The surging pennants, which prevent forward aft movement in bad weather, are neatly stored along the bulkheads. So too are the hold down pennants, which prevent the mines straining sideways. That bracket fits under the rail. The slings, with which the mines will be lowered inboard, are also held ready for use. Together with standard tools and the electrical gear used to prepare and test the mines, the essential equipment of the mining deck is covered. Before the mines are actually embarked, there are many preparations and checks to be made. First, the rails must be gauged in case of any misalignment which would cause the mines to jam. For this, a special gauge is used 
which must be pushed the full length of the rails. It should move smoothly all the time. This gauge only checks one side at a time. It must be reversed to prove the alignment of the other side. A clearance gauge is also run along to make sure that nothing can possibly get fouled. The rails should also be greased and the bogey tested. The hauling aft wire is rigged along the rollers on the inboard side, then passed around the bogey. The retaining flaps are shut and the wire guided through the clips on the outboard side. Finally, it is shackled to the spring buffer. The bogey is positioned forward of the embarkation point. The rail flaps open and the guide plates fitted. Meanwhile, the electrical equipment used to test the mines is itself being checked. Loading hatches can be opened at any time before embarkation. It usually depends on the weather. There are two main types of mines. These are boils. And these, the Mark 12 ground mines which lay on the bottom. Mark 12s present a problem in loading because very few ships have hatches big enough to accept them in a horizontal position. They must therefore be loaded vertically. <laughs> Normally, mines are loaded by dockside cranes. And if two are available, port and starboard loading can go on simultaneously. The ship's crane, however, should always be at standby in case of breakdown. As a Mark 12 is lowered through the hatch, a steadying pennant of the right length is connected, so that once the mine is clear, it will be pulled to the horizontal and the wheels can then enter the rails. Once in, the first mine is manhandled to its travelling position at the bottom of the slope up of the rail. Slings must always be fixed to the sinkers of buoyant mines and not to the mine itself. As the mine enters, the mining deck crew make sure the wheels turn easily and that there is no superficial damage. Buoyants have two types of sinker. This one is a Mark 17, which releases the mine as soon as it nears the bottom. Mark 18s, with their delayed release, only separate when a predetermined set of conditions has been fulfilled. When mixed fields are being laid, the greater length of the Mark 12 requires a spacer to be used between it and a buoyant mine. This is necessary, but it loses space on the mining deck. It is therefore not always desirable to lay port and starboard alternately.
the differing types of mines make it essential that the plan be carefully checked during loading, particularly as the Mark 12s are mounted on their carriages to overlap left and right. Once the full complement is on board, the bogies are winched aft to make contact with the last mines. Then the work of preparation can begin. Many checks must be made, many tests carried out, and clocks and timing devices set. A checklist is provided, and each mine must have everything on that list carried out. Three ends of the lead tester to the terminals of an apparatus testing continuity, Mark three. Connected. Check. Meter switches on and lamp switches off. There should be no reading on A, T, C. Only after the long sequence has been followed on every mine are they ready for laying. Before going to sea, the surging and hold down pennants are fitted. The last things to be added are the practice flares. Hands to mining stations. Hands to mining stations. Hands to mining stations. Hands to mining stations. Immediately on close-up, there is lots to do in a short time. The surging and holding down pennants are removed and stowed. The arisings, the many safety devices, must be removed from those mines which constitute the field to be laid. Safety switch, dummy soluble plug, cover and pin. These must all be mustered to make sure none has been forgotten. Again, a checklist is provided. Bridge, Captain. Bridge, mining deck. Request indicator test. Roger, stand by mechanical and electrical indicator test. You are showing stand by. Lay mines. Stop lane. Mechanical indicator test correct. Stand by port mining gong. Stand by starboard mining gong. Every piece of equipment all the way through the sequence must be tested. Fouling indicator, bogey, the mining trap itself. Even the smallest bits must be tried before the operation begins for real. The winch is engaged and the trains of mines are hauled up so that the first one is at the top of the rise. Two mine spaces from the trap. Steer 340. Steer 340. Just coming up to two cables to run, sir. Roger. Pass the mining deck, two cables to run. Two cables to run. Cable to run. Stand by, out pins. Half a cable to run. Half a cable, out. stand by. No, no, no. Two cables to run. Two cables to run. Two 
cables to run. Roger, two cables to run. Steer three, four, five. Steer three, four, five. One cable to run, sir. One cable to run. One cable to run. Stand by, L, P. Midships, steer three, five, two. Half a cable, stand by. Half cable, stand by. Oh, yeah. Stand by. Now. 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 Buoyants are the next in line. The spacer is jettisoned. Nine cables to run to the next mine. To get an accurate distance between mines, the taut wire recorder is used. It's operated by streaming a thin wire over the stern, recording the distance the ship has travelled, and the information is repeated to the bridge. As a plummet release buoyant mine enters the water, it disappears from sight. Then it breaks surface, curtsies, and eventually sinks. The complete sequence is carefully timed from splash to the final dip. This gives an indication of the correct operation of the mine and also its exact time of laying. The final disappearance comes when a hanging contact beneath the sinker touches bottom. And so it goes on. Trap. Winch up. And lay. Modern mine laying is very much a matter of accurate navigation and split-second timing. The bridge and mining deck personnel must work together. It's a precise routine in which everybody aboard has a part to play in making our waters safer for us and hazardous for our enemies. Now, now, now. 